Checkered Giants. Good luck with that. Best rabbit breeds with good personalities. So there is a lot of misinformation out there. Before I jump into these breeds, I have raised rabbits for over 25 years. I have been showing rabbits for over 20. So you want to call me on the crap, I will argue with you all day. <laughs> I have been at plenty of very large rabbit shows and gotten to interact with all of these breeds that I'm going to talk about. Let's just say all rabbit breeds are not equal. So I'm going to go into a few tips that will help you choose a good rabbit breed based on some of these tips before I get into the breed recommendations, okay? And I'm going to recommend a few that I would not recommend. Bring up a few that I would not recommend. Anyways, you get what I'm saying. So the first one is the gender plays a role in their temperament. Bucks are always going to be, on the whole, the first or the best and most consistent temperament, okay? So does get a little bit hormonal every spring-ish, all of that kind of thing. You might call it a heat, kind of. Either way, they get grouchy. Some of them are just a little bit more reserved and like standoffish. Some of them are all out little she devils. <laughs> um, and so they essentially, once they would get bred, raise a litter, then their, their temperament will go back around and be pretty decent. Um, it depends on the breed, how bad, but it also depends on the lines of how bad they would be. So I'm going to talk about that too. The bloodlines sometimes can have an effect because a lot of rabbit raisers, especially if they're in the show world, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them, if the confirmation of the rabbit is good and their temperament is terrible, they will still keep them and keep using them. So that's not all of them. It's, I'm not going to drop names, but you, the only way you're going to know that though, is if you go to a rabbit show and you start learning like who's who kind of, um, a large like state type show, not just a local one will get you more, you know, you're going to be able to pick it out more. Um, but anyways, so that you could also ask some people. Um, but if they haven't been in it for years, they're not going to know either. This one is a little controversial. The age you get the rabbit will affect how friendly and how um, adjusted they are to you. I get so many people, especially it's slowed down a little bit because I think on my social accounts, I've pushed it really hard. But the longer you leave the rabbit with a breeder or whoever has it or how if maybe they just haven't decided to sell it until it was a little bit older, it will not adjust to you nearly as well as if you had got it right at the eight week point. Now, I don't know other states, but Ohio, you have to keep or leave the rabbit at the breeders up to eight weeks. Like the legal sale age is eight weeks. The mom typically for most litters is absolutely done by four weeks nursing. If they're longer than that, she is just a pushover and <laughs> lets them sneak a little bit here and there. Um, but even three weeks is when she starts weaning them off. Um, so after that point, you know, sh they don't need her anymore. Um, now a lot of times they'll stay with the litter. If for me personally, if I see that mom is getting a little stressed, um, I will remove her from the litter and leave the litter together. Um, that will work sometimes. So that is just the case. But also, if they are with their litter for too long, they will fight. People don't want to acknowledge this. Rabbits fight. They do not live together, okay? So I like to have as many separated as possible by, at, I say 12 weeks, but honestly, last year I had two does, two sisters, fight at nine weeks. So that number is quickly reducing. 12 weeks was good for a long time. Um, but you can also kind of tell by like maybe the mom's temperament a little bit, the, that litter, the mom's a little frisky too. So she's great with me, but she's also a little bit more high strung. So with that said, separate them even earlier if possible. Um, but yeah, try and get them like no older than 12 weeks at the max. Um, I try to get mine picked up all by 10 weeks old. So it's not doing you any favors by 
leaning with them with mama longer. Like you're not getting yourself, it's not, it's not helping you. <laughs> okay. Um, and then like I have bought rabbits, bucks and does at like four and five and six months old, you know, because of the confirmation kind of thing. So people like the, the higher up readers will take longer to sell off some of them because they want to watch them develop and all that. So this past summer, I did get two bucks and the one took a couple of weeks to warm up to me, but I still, like I've had this buck for six months and he still is not thrilled with me. <laughs> um, I've had some, they eventually get a little bit better. I've had them a couple of years and some of them even don't fully like me, like, you know, and so I've worked with them a long time. And so like, I know what I'm doing <laughs> and it takes a long time to get them if they've been used to their original caregiver and then moving them to another one. All right, the top breeds that I recommend. Now these are also based off of the ones that are easy to find. Um, you know, there's no point in me recommending something that you just can't find. Um, the lot breeds in general as a group are going to be probably the number one like category of rabbit breeds that are going to be the friendliest um, the easiest to find and essentially the easiest to manage. Um, I will get to them in order and give you my reasons why, but be that as it may. English Lops are going to be probably my number one if you like larger breeds. They have one drawback. I have owned them. They can be nippy and they chew on everything. <laughs> Um, I, I, I got the experience to have one for a little while and I'm like, nope, this chicken for English slops. The other problem with them is because of how long their ears are, the standard is that they're 21 inches tip to tip. So if they were held out, um, that is how long they should be. So those are the really long eared ones. Um, the other issue with that is if you keep them outside, the the ears drag so if it's super cold um i have heard of people wrapping them um never done that but they can freeze to the bottom of or whatever to the cage so they they tear easy um so that sounds kind of bad but it's facts right um so you have to manage the ears a lot more um and be more attentive to that the next one in line in my personal opinion would be mini lops however they are one of those breeds that can have some pretty nasty temperaments here and there. Um, they're not, <laughs> they're not all of them per se, but like pay attention to the one you get. Don't just go for cuteness. Okay. Um, they are not the smallest, even though their name is mini. <laughs> they're on average are about four to six pounds. Um, they're a great size for both younger and a little bit older kids or people who are just getting started. Um, the next one in line, or that would be my choice, is the Holland Lop, and they are the smallest. American Fuzzy Lop is kind of next door to them, but uh, in, on the whole, I would say that they are the smallest lop breed. Um, so they are around two and a half, 12 pounds, or two and a half, 12, two and a half to three pounds. Um, and they are really good as far as like a good starter breed. Um, they are pretty much like a French lop, but just a very, very mini version of them. Um, but they, again, like the mini lops, <laughs> can't have the occasional crouch. Um, so those aren't bad either. Then I have French lops at the bottom under that. The reason being is that they are very big. Um, and people want a rabbit that they can just carry around and they do not like it. French Lops do not like being carried around. Um, largely because they are so big and they do not want to feel like they're going to be dropped. Um, you just have to accept it. Like some people are like, oh, to get him used to it. No, <laughs> they don't like it. So stop it. Um, and so you have to work with the breed the way that they like to be worked with. If you want them to be a good pet. Um, they're also pretty hard to find. I can only tell you about five breeders that I know of in the U.S. Um, there are people who kind of like dabble in them a little bit, but as far as dedicated breeders, like there's not too many of us. Um, what was the next one? Oh, I said American Fuzzy Lop. <laughs> the reason those are at the bottom, those are super 
they're, they're again very small, but they have wool. Um, so that is also a drawback to them. All right, French and English Angoras. I think those would be an okay breed if you like the wool. The wool is a lot of work. <laughs> I have had Jersey Woolies and they, every time I think about dipping back into them, I go to a show and see how furry and wooly they are. And I'm like, well, I think, I think I'm good. The English Angoras are a little bit smaller than the French Angoras and the English are the ones that have like a lot of fur around their face too and over their ears. Um, the French ones are like, they still have a clean face for the most part. Um, and they are a lot bigger, probably a third bigger. Um, you would have to like at minimum group them once a week. Um, I'm not one that's like, tells you to do things just because it sounds good. Um, but yeah, you're not going to get away with not grooming them at least once a week. So most people tend to have, I have seen, I'm sure there's people who have more, but usually no one has more than 10 if they are a breeder of those, um, just for the sheer work of them. Their temperaments are pretty even keel. There, here's my, my logic on that. For breeds that are meant to be market animals, it doesn't matter what their temperament is. So, you know, they're not going to be around that long. But when you look at it, English Angoras or any of the Angoras really, some of them are meat, but, or they were, they can be a meat rabbit, but they generally are for producing wool for clothing. So you need something that's going to behave at least a little bit if you're going to be, you know, shearing it or plucking. Don't freak out. It's not like completely plucking. Um, <laughs> you're just like pulling the loose wool out of them. Um, and, you know, stuff like that. So that's my logic behind that one. Um, I already brought up <laughs> Jersey Woolies. They are kind of like the small version of that. Um, I would give them, some of them are pretty even tempered. However, there are some that, um, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it like, um, aggressive, but just jumpy and kind of high strung. Um, they, but they would be a very good, like starter breed. They were perfect for me when I was, I got my first herd of them at 10. So that was not a bad. Breed. All right. Mini Rex. Um, I think they're a pretty decent breed. They are pretty even keel for the most part. They really don't require much grooming, um, unless they're like molting. You don't want to be like brushing them all the time, especially if you show them because that will damage their fur. Um, there's really not a whole lot of care to do with that. I have seen them. I think they can have a t timid tendency. Um, but I don't think you would run into too much aggression with those. Netherland Dwarfs. I had one of those. <laughs> um, high strung is the word I have to say about those. Aggressive, not so much, but you do have to be very careful. Um, that is a breed that I would make sure you got young because once the habits and behaviors are established, you're stuck. <laughs> um, and so the one that I did have, I mean, he was an ADD rabbit, ran laps like never stopped. Breeds I would not recommend. <laughs> so I don't care what mainstream media says anymore. There are breeds that are not for inexperienced and they 90% of the time are, you're not going to, you're not going to change it. They're not dogs. Um, so I kind of already teased checker giants. They're like the thoroughbred of rabbits. <laughs> They're huge, but they are also the racy kind of like hair like body um when they are shown they they are like encouraged to run back and forth so they can see them in motion um <laughs> we were there was a he's a judge he also raises them and they were like literally jumping off the show table um because they were just so high strung and we were teasing them about putting a leash on it um that kind of thing so and they, they will be nippy. Um, you can't expect it to not. I, with my French lops, I've, I've only been bit like three times in all of my nearly 15 years of raising them. And all of those times I had it coming. Like I knew that it was going to happen. Um, and so with those, you never know. Uh, <laughs> so just be advised. You checker giants are like very high strung, very, very high strung. Um, there are a couple other breeds. I'm just going to run through really quick because they are very similar. Um, 
English spots. I will say that they are a little bit more calm because like, but they still have that very, they, they again are, are meant to be, a, they are a racy breed. They are meant to run <laughs> um, when they are shown. Um, tans are another one. They are not tan. <laughs> they are either black or chocolate. Um, and then they also have an accented tan color. Um, they are another breed that is starting to become very popular, but they are even more, um, I don't want to say wild, but like hair like, like the, they have more wild tendencies, um, within them. Um, those, I saw those recommended a lot. Not good pet recommendations. Belgian hares are another one that was becoming popular. Would not recommend them at all. They, again, are starting to become very, or they are starting to become a little bit more popular, but they have a very wild habit um, and tendency. The last one I'm going to kind of shoot down as far as recommendations, I like them and they are very popular because people like dogs want the biggest rabbit possible, um, is Flemish Giants. I like them. I've had them. The, they're very nippy. Um, they don't have a wild tendency, but they are opinionated and they need someone very confident and who will not tolerate that behavior. Um, if you are a pushover or you are like, oh, you know, like not going to correct them on it, then you're going to have a rabbit that will like run over you with a steamroller, right? So I don't do this kind of video often, but I felt it was needed because I am personally getting sick of the misinformation out there of people who, you know, have one rabbit and think they're an expert. Anyways, <laughs> spicy. Um, I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you in the next video.